the last video we have seen the vapor pressure of the liquid solutions uh, where it was the liquid liquid case today also we will see the vapor pressure of the solutions but today it will be the classic case where it will be solids in liquids remember solids are non volatile in nature in general so the raoult's law how the raoult's law is going to be applicable over here whether the equations will remain the same or it will be changed that we are going to observe and while doing that we will came, come to the conclusion that it when we add a solute in the liquid which is obviously volatile means the liquid is volatile but the solute is non volatile the there will be a little bit lowering of vapor pressure which we also called the relative lowering of vapor pressure so this is one of the colligative property now what is a colligative property this and that we are going to discuss just after this video so today's purpose is to understand the vapor pressure of a solution where it is the solids in liquids remember the solid is non volatile that means the only solvent part which is the liquid is going to be volatile one what will be the situation of the raoult's law and its expressions over there and what is the outcome and then we are going to understand the differences between the ideal solution and non ideal solutions after observing the vapor pressure of the solutions in the binary phases where it was in liquid liquid case here also we are going to observe the vapor pressure of solutions but here it will be solids in liquids but in case of solids in liquids there will be some kind of changes compared to the previous ones so here i have drawn two diagrams if we carefully see to understand the difference between the two we must understand first what is happening in this diagram so let us first mention that this is the solvent on the surface and over here these are the solvent molecules which is here also now of course this is vapor which is getting generated from the solvent molecule itself so vapor will be here also but if you see carefully here along with the solvent the, there are some solute particles so this is solute red one so it is a solute particle now what i mean to say is check carefully this is the case where only pure solvent is present and here solvent plus solute both are present it is observed that the vapor pressure of the solution is found to be less than that of the pure solvent so we can say the vapor pressure of solution is found to be less sorry is found to be less than that of pure solvent vapor pressure of pure solvent so since on this side the amount of vapor pressure that will be generated is more let us try to understand the reason we know that here only the solvent molecule is present now vapor pressure depends on the tendency of the escape of the solvent molecules from the surface areas you can see this uh, blue particles or the blue molecules they are all over the surface area now as a result of it on the left hand side the tendency to escape from the surface will be only by the solvent molecules but on the right hand side there are solute particles also which is also present on the surface also and as we know that this is a surface phenomena evaporation is a surface phenomena so solute particles are non volatile solute is non volatile so they are not going to evaporate so only blue particles or the blue molecules they are going to evaporate but 
on the surface area along with the blue molecule the red molecules which is a solute molecules are also present they are not going to evaporate so the tendency to escape of the blue molecules from the surface will be same but the amount will be less here you can see that's why i have drawn less number of molecules that means less number of molecules from this surface are going to be evaporated so less amount of vapor pressure will be generated that is why we have came to the conclusion that vapor pressure of solution is less than the vapor pressure of pure solvent we have seen that in case of uh, solids in liquids the amount of vapor pressure that will be generated is comparatively lesser so when we have observed that the amount of vapor pressure is comparatively lesser in this case let us see what will be the implementation of raoult's law under these circumstances remember as per the raoult's law we suppose it is a which is solvent and b which is solid now since the vapor pressure of solution is due to vapor pressure of solvent only because the solute is non volatile so according to raoult's law we should be able to write pa is equal to xa into pa not but this pa which is the vapor pressure of solvent it should be is equal to it should be is equal to p which is vapor pressure of solution we have already mentioned that so we should be able to write p is equal to xa into pno from here we can write p by pno is equal to xa now in this equation if we subtract left and right both sides from by 1 from 1 then it should be like this 1 minus p by p a 0 1 minus x a further it should be p a 0 minus p by p a 0 is equal to 1 minus x a now let us try to understand this part carefully p a 0 what is that it is the vapor pressure of pure solvent minus the vapor pressure of solution this part is nothing but the difference in vapor pressure so we are adding little bit of solute in a pure solvent then it becomes the solution and in the solution the vapor pressure will be less compared to what it was when there was pure solvent so this is called difference in vapor pressure and this total part is called relative lowering of vapor pressure this is relative because the difference in vapor pressure is further divided by pa0 with respect to the pure solvent 1 minus x since it's a binary solution the addition of mole fraction should be 1 so 1 minus x a should be is equal to x p so this equation can further be written as pa0 minus p divided by pa0 is equal to x p this famous equation is also known as r l v p that is the relative lowering of vapor pressure now we have to understand the physical significance also the amount of solute 
or its mole fraction if we increase the vapor pressure will be lowered more will be the amount more will be the lowering of vapor pressure or the relative lowering of vapor pressure so that is how the raoult's law changes in this particular case we have seen two laws till now raoult's law and henry's law now let us try to correlate between these two laws is there any correlation let us see so from raoult's law what we can write is pa is equal to pa not into xa right that is the vapor pressure of a solution is equal to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent into the mole fraction and from henry's law p is equal to k h into x so here also if we combine both the laws if we see from both the laws we can see in both the case the partial pressure in both the case the partial pressure of volatile component this one the partial pressure of volatile component it is directly proportional i would say it is directly proportional to you see in both the case here also pa0 which is the vapor pressure of a solvent pure solvent and here also it's a constant so in both the case this one is directly proportional to the mole fraction so it is directly proportional to the mole fraction in solution and proportionality constant over here is pa0 and here it is henry's constant so raoult's law can become a special case of henry's law in which kh becomes equal to the pa0 if this is fulfilled then raoult's law becomes a special case of henry's law see the proportionality constant over here is pa0 here it is kh that means the henry's constant now if the henry's law constant and the vapor pressure of pure solvent becomes equal then the raoult's law becomes a special case to the henry's law so both the laws are in accordance to each other but here we need to mention that the difference and the similarity between the laws see raoult's law and henry's law both are applicable to volatile component hmm raoult's law defines the proportionality constant as the vapor pressure of the pure component where the henry's law defines the proportionality constant as an experimentally determined quantity as kh this one so this is the similarity between the two this the difference between ideal solution and non ideal solution so let us first try to understand what is an ideal solution an ideal solution may be defined as the solution which obeys raoult's law exactly over the entire range of concentration that means here i have already written that the raoult's law basically which is which um, the ideal solution is basically which obeys raoult's law obeys raoult's law means it will obey these equations as well pa is equal to pa not into xa and pb is equal to pb not into xp it will also obey that p is equal to pa plus pb which means pa into means pa not into xa plus pb not into xb that means all the equations which raoult's law has suggested the ideal solution is supposed to follow that and in addition to this two more equations or two more things it will follow one is the delta h mix should be zero and third is delta v mix should also be zero now 
what does it mean it is a heat change of mixing that means since there is no change due to attractive forces of the two components present the heat change between the mixing of these two of the solution should also be zero means the attractive forces are not there between the solutions so if you are mixing the solutions there will not be any kind of change in heat similarly the volume change volume change of the solution should also be zero because there is no change in the volume for an example so, suppose you are mixing 100 cm cube of a which is solute in 100 cm cube of b now in this solution since both are mixed their total volume should be 200 so there is no change over here 200 centimeter cube that is what i want to say is delta v mixing should be zero in case of ideal solution now in case of non ideal solution just the opposite things first is that raoult's law will not be followed that means pa is not equal to pa0 into xa and pb is not equal to xp into pv0 so of course if these two equations are not followed the raoult's law will not be followed and similarly the delta v mix is not equal to zero and the heat change of the mixing is also not equal to zero that means if you are mixing two of the solutions there will be a change in heat and there will be a change in volume so again i would like to uh, repeat the total story we are talking about the ideal solution and non-ideal solution ideal solution mainly which obeys the raoult's law non-ideal solution doesn't obey the raoult's law so all the equations over here will be followed will be maintained here the equations are just not being maintained here delta h and delta v mixing should be zero here it will not be is equal to zero